Welcome to the Micro Pitch Delay Pedal Tutorial. My name is Joe Kotze with Eventide, and I'll be guiding you through an explanation of all the parameters, how they relate to one another, and the general functionality of the pedal. The technique of micro pitch shifting originated as a byproduct of the H910 harmonizer. It was a processor with a somewhat unstable clock that caused it to flicker between two pitch ratios. As a result, in the studio, engineers combined two of these units to achieve a rich stereo spread effect. Its successor, the H949 harmonizer, not only improved its clocking, but employed new techniques to achieve small, precise deviations in pitch, cementing the technique of micro-pitch shifting as a useful production tool. For decades, as the algorithm evolved in Eventide's ultra-harmonizer processors, musicians have used it as a way to make their guitar sound huge, make their lead tones jump out of the mix, and add dimension to any source. Things like vocals, keyboards, guitars, and even used its pitch diving capabilities on drums for added thickness. The Micro Pitch Delay pedal is a dual pitch shifted delay with fine resolution detuning and modulation that can be used for things like chorusing, lush repeating delays, and even creative sound design. It's effective whether used subtly as a thickener or set to the extremes for special effect. The simplicity of this pedal to make things sound bigger is what makes it fun to use with the Micro Pitch Delay pedal, you can easily harness the power of this iconic Eventide effect heard on countless hit records. On the front panel, Micro Pitch Delay features six dual function knobs. The top level primary controls are shown in white. Mix, Pitch A, Pitch B, Depth, Rate and Sensitivity, and Pitch Mix. To access the secondary parameters delineated in black, press the page button on the top right. With the LED lit, each knob now takes on functions like tone, delay for voice A, delay for voice B, modulation type, feedback, and output level. To revert back to the primary controls, just press the page button once again. Micro pitch delay consists of two voices, each with a delay line, defined by delay A and delay B, and a detuning module, similarly defined by pitch A or pitch B. When I refer to a particular voice in this tutorial, I'm talking about the combination of delay and detuning together. For the majority of this demo, I'll be connecting my guitars to micro pitch delay in mono, but outputting from the pedal in stereo. If you're following along on a mono or a portable device, you'll get the most from this tutorial if you're listening on headphones. Micro pitch delay gives us the ability to do some very creative things with the stereo image. With this in mind, let's take a guided tour of each parameter. To demonstrate the functionality of the mix knob, I'll start off with the first onboard preset called H3000 Micro Pitch. It's named after the algorithm from the famed Ultra Harmonizer processor. It's a preset that features two detuned voices with a slight delay on voice B and a little bit of filtering. I'm going to start off with the pedal bypass for a reference. Let's activate it. Let's take the mix knob all the way down for a dry signal. As we begin to increase the mix, we also increase the volume of the micro pitch voices, adding a subtle thickness to our sound. Beyond the midpoint, the dry signal begins to diminish. Since I'm connected to the pedal with my guitar in mono, we can perceive the wonderful width the effect renders when we take the mix knob all the way up. For example, in this case, there is no dry guitar. For me, the optimal mix knob setting is about two thirds of the way up. This way, we get all the signals interacting, the dry guitar and both micro pitch delay voices. It's a great example of how the pedal can give us chorus-like tones uh, 
described by many as a chorus without a wobble. If we want, we can add some delay to each of the voices and add some feedback. And the micro pitch delay detuning with the extended repeats renders a dual delay with a lot of character. As we can hear, the mix knob tailors the balance between the dry signal and all the elements of the algorithm, the detune voices, the pan delays, the filtering, and the modulation, to render a sound with a lot of depth and dimension. While the mix knob controls the relative level between dry and wet signals, the pitch mix knob is the parameter that controls the balance between voice A and voice B, and it behaves differently depending on how we use it. For example, in a mono rig, if pitch mix is set to A, we'll only hear voice A's detuning and delay. Pay attention to the delay repeats. As we move the knob clockwise, we begin to add voice B into the mix. begin to hear them interplay with each other. With pitch mix in the middle, there will be an equal contribution of voice A and voice B coming out of output 1. As I move past the midpoint, voice A begins to decrease. And if we go all the way to voice B, we only hear voice B's detuning and delay. So if I take it back to A for a second, back to B, you can hear the differing delay times. If I leave pitch mix in the middle, once again, in, in a mono rig, you have an equal contribution of voice A and voice B. In stereo operation, pitch mix not only controls the relative level between the voices, but it also determines the stereo spread of those voices. Micro pitch delay renders the widest width possible when pitch mix is set to the midpoint. In this position, voice A goes to out one only, and voice B goes to out two only. Any dry signal gets sent to both outputs equally. So in this example, you can hear the short delay of voice A come out of the left channel and the longer delay of voice B come out of the right channel. If we move pitch mix off center, either to the left or to the right, the pedal will begin to center focus the voices. Now I know this sounds counter counterintuitive, so let's take a look at my vector scope to check out what's going on. I'll use the first preset to keep things simple. With pitch mix at the midpoint, we get a nice wide sound. If I put pitch mix at the one o'clock position, we can hear the voices become a little more center-focused, but leaning towards the right side. If we put pitch mix to the 10 o'clock position, the opposite happens. We can still hear the voices become center-focused, but this time on the left side of the stereo field.
at either extreme, A or B, the pedal will automatically pan the voice and the dry signal to the center, effectively making your signal monophonic. Depending on the pitch mix position, the pedal will automatically pan the voices to always try to achieve a balanced stereo field. Micro pitch delay has two knobs dedicated to detuning. Pitch A shifts your sound smoothly from unison up to plus 50 cents, and pitch B shifts your sound down from unison to minus 50 cents. As a guide, the positive and negative signs indicate which direction the pitch shifting occurs. To demonstrate these voices more clearly, I'll start out fully wet and isolate voice A by setting pitch mix to A. As I turn pitch A, notice the upward detuning. If I add some dry signal back in, we can hear the contrast in pitches rendering a nice doubling chorus-like effect. Let's go fully wet again, and I'll shift pitch mix over to B. As I turn pitch B, notice the downward pitch shifting. Remember that the pitch mix knob determines how the voices will be panned in the stereo field. At each extreme, A or B, the energy of the audio resides in the center. We can clearly hear the difference in pitch from A to B, but if I move pitch mix to the middle, we can hear how the pedal spreads each voice left and right, respectively. So in the left channel, you're going to hear voice A detuned by plus 50 cents, and in the right channel, you'll hear voice B detuned by minus 50 cents. Obviously, this is a very cacophonous setting, so let me back off on some of the detuning for each voice. That's a little bit more musical, but as is, you may perceive the detuning to still be exaggerated. But listen to what happens when I mix some dry signal back in. That's the sound we've heard on so many countless hit records. Let's compare setting the mix fully dry As I increase the mix, we perceive an increase in width because I'm reducing the monophonic dry signal from the center of the field. The psychoacoustic effect of this makes the image seem wider. But my recommendation, when the mix knob is all the way up, Use lower detune values for the micro pitch voices, unless you want that disparity for effect, right? The pitch section on micro pitch delay is that secret sauce that so many guitars have used to thicken and widen their crunch tones. To demonstrate the delay's behavior, I'll leave in some dry signal and start off with pitch mix all the way to the A side, so that we only hear voice A in mono. If pitch A is set to unison and we increase delay A, it sounds just like a traditional delay.
But once we increase pitch A to introduce micro pitch shifting, we can hear the detuning take effect on the delayed signal. In fact, if we add feedback, the signal coming out of the voice is fed back into the delay module and detuned again, causing an interesting pitch shifting cascade. When the feedback is present, lower pitch settings take longer to produce a delay with a perceptible shift in pitch. As we hold the chord, we can hear how nicely the detuned repeats mix with each other to add thickness to the trails. We can also see that higher pitch settings provide more drastic detuned iterations of the delays, right? <laughs> Also worth noting, as delay times get shorter, the change in pitch happens more rapidly. So check this out. So lower pitch settings tend to make notes held longer, wash out more subtly. So if I lower the pitch, you'll see how that cleans up nicely. Try a longer feedback path. All this time we've been playing with just voice A, so let's add voice B by raising the pitch mix to the midpoint. And now we'll hear voice A's delay on the left side and right now voice B in unison on the right side. Let me add some detuning to voice B as well as some delay time. Under the hood, in the delay's feedback path, the output of each voice is fed back into itself while simultaneously being cross-fed into the input of the other voice at a reduced amount. It's particularly noticeable when we're using different delay times or subdivisions on each delay. We can hear that cross feeding filling up the space nicely. The combination of micro pitch voices, the differing delay times, the feedback settings, and the pitch mix settings give us plenty to explore. Micro pitch delay can be set between two different tap modes, time or tempo. When the tap mode is set to time, turning the knobs adjusts the delay time from 0 to 3000 milliseconds. Tempo mode, on the other hand, allows us to access common subdivisions along the range of the knobs and it quantizes the delays to those note values. The delay time is also extended up to six seconds. I'll explain how to adjust between these two modes in our discussion on the pedal's tap foot switch and LED button later in the video. Another tool in the micro pitch delay arsenal is the tone filter, which is a secondary control of the mix knob that only affects the wet signal. From the midpoint to fully counterclockwise, it provides a low shelf boost at 1000 Hz, combined with a high shelf cut at 2000 Hz. At the extreme, the low end gets boosted up to plus 9 dB, 
while the high end gets cut by minus 9 dB. From the midpoint to fully clockwise, the filter is a low shelf cut at 1000 Hz, combined with a high shelf boost at 2000 Hz. All the way up gives a max boost of plus 9 dB to the top end and a minus 9 dB cut to the low end. At the midpoint, the response is flat. The tone filter affects the signal after the feedback path, so use it to affect the overall warmth or brightness of the wet signal. Micropitch delay has a pitch modulation section we can use to add more texture to our sound. As long as we have added detuning using any combination of pitch A and pitch B, the modulation will influence our sound to varying degrees. Beginning on the secondary page, the mod parameters divided into three sections indicated by the black icons, the positive envelope, LFO, and negative envelope mod types. The negative envelope decreases the pitch amount relative to the increase in volume of our signal. This means that as long as my signal is above a certain threshold, it will modulate our pitch less. The sensitivity of this envelope is controlled by the Rate and Sensitivity knob on the Primary Controls page. If depth is all the way up, it represents a bipolar swing of the modulation from 0 cents to 2 times the pitch settings. Lesser values scale proportionally. To give you a clear sense of what the negative envelope modulation does, I'll start off only using pitch A and exaggerating its detuning. For comparison, I'll give you my dry signal. And I will go fully wet. That's a change in pitch of plus 50 cents. Now, I'll max out the depth so we can clearly hear how the pitch modulation is affecting the signal. Since at max depth there's a doubling of the pitch settings, we're hearing a, whole, a full semitone shift. That's the equivalent of playing half a step up. So if I bypass the pedal, it's as if I were doing this. If I play the A chord again and activate the pedal, we hear the B flat chord. Now, as I play, I'll adjust my sensitivity so that the initial attacks come through unmodulated and gradually start to pitch modulate as they ring out. It'll sound like a boing. We can hear that higher sensitivity settings make the pitch modulation take longer to affect the signal. Every pickup, every instrument, whether a guitar or not, has a sweet spot, and we can hear it when we reach it. We should also take into account how hard we're attacking the instrument, because after all, the sensitivity pays attention to the level of the input. As I attack softly, we still hear the modulation. If I dig in a little more, we hear the envelope kicking in. We hear the bend in pitch happen from a lower tuning up to the pitch generated by the combination of our pitch A setting and the depth setting. So what is that lower pitch? Well, if I bypass the pedal, you can tell it's our dry, it's our original signal. Now let's add some dry signal back in to really hear how micro pitch delays modulation wonderfully adds character to the sound. I'll back off on the pitch and depth settings. The great function of the modulation section is that it gives us control over the effects instead of having that detuning effect on all the time. So if I take the depth setting to zero, you can hear it on all the time. If I add modulation, 
starts off clean and then gets modulated. We can use the modulation to breathe life into the behavior of the sound, right? So all this time we've been listening to just voice A. Voice B reacts the same way, but in the opposite pitch direction. The other type of envelope modulation is the positive envelope. Here, an increase in volume increases the pitch amount and then gradually comes back down to normal. So in this case, the reverse should happen. As I strum the chords, they should start out heavily modulated and as they ring out, they'll start to return to the normal pitch settings. For comparison, I'll go back to negative envelope. And here's positive envelope again. A third mod type is the sine wave LFO icon. Here, the pitch modulation is controlled by a low frequency oscillator, and its speed is controlled by the rate and sensitivity knob on the primary parameters page. The LFO rate can be adjusted from 0.1 hertz to 10 hertz. Let's go back to pitch A for fun. Let's use both voices. To turn off any modulation, set the depth control to zero. As you can hear, by nature, wherever there's detuning and dry signal together, there's always going to be some movement in the tone. But with micro pitch delays modulation, however, you can further add texture. So it's clear, when you're using the LFO, this knob controls the rate. And when you're using either of the two envelope modes, it controls the sensitivity of the envelope. Here's another tip. The modulation is most noticeable when the mix knob is above 50%. For now, for fun, let's add some delay and feedback. Lastly, the pedal features an output control, which is a secondary parameter of the pitch mix knob. It ranges from minus 18 dB to plus 9 dB. Output is at unity gain when the knob is in the center. I recommend using it to optimize the balance between the bypassed volume and the result of your process signal when activated. Output level can also be mapped to an expression pedal. Micropitch delay features two foot switches each with a corresponding LED button. The active foot switch serves to engage or bypass the effect. When activated, the corresponding LED will light up. Typically, when an active foot switch is pressed, it latches or remains in a given state until it's pressed again. A cool feature of the micro pitch delay is the ability to change the active foot switch from latching to momentary functionality by pressing the LED above it. When set to momentary, the effect is activated as long as the foot switch is pressed and automatically bypasses when released. But notice that when bypassed, the delay gets cut off. Micro pitch delay allows you to choose between three different bypass modes. Buffered, Relay, and DSP plus effects. If your bypass mode is DSP plus effects, the delay trails will continue to ring out when bypassed as dry signal passes through the pedal.
The factory setting is buffered, so you may want to make the adjustment in system settings, as I'll show you later. The LED button above the right foot switch indicates how tap will function, but it also lets us know whether the pedal is in preset mode or tap mode. Notice right now that it's off, indicating the foot switch is set to preset mode. This allows us to scroll through the five available presets on the ladder. Once we land on a preset, we have five seconds to press the active foot switch to load it. Otherwise, it times out and remains on the current preset. However, if we hold the right foot switch down for two seconds, we enter tap mode. How the delays behave depends on whether the pedal's tap mode is set to time or tempo. As a visual guide, if the LED button above the foot switch is either solidly lit or blinking, we can now adjust the tap time with the foot switch. A solid LED indicates the pedal's tap mode is set to time, and each delay can be set from 0 to 3000 milliseconds. It's important to note that tapping on the foot switch will force the delay on both voices to sync and repeat to the beat of the registered timing, even if the initial settings feature two differing delay times for voice A and B. For example, let's say I start out with this delay A setting. And then I put delay B there. We can hear two separate delays repeating at different times in the left and right channels. But as I tap a new delay time, notice how both delays sync together as one. If you want to maintain the individual subdivisions intact when tapping a new delay time, then you must set the tap mode to tempo by pressing the LED button once. It will begin to blink, indicating we have switched to tempo mode. Now, tapping the foot switch sets the tempo in beats per minute, and both delays are quantized to note lengths. So why would I choose one mode over the other? Time mode allows for greater precision of delay times, and I recommend it most when you want to achieve slap style echoes. For example, preset number two features a short delay time on voice A and a longer delay on voice B. Delay A is used to add a sense of space, while B acts as a general trailing repeat. Let me adjust mix and pitch mix to highlight these effects. I'll deconstruct this preset first by removing delay B. We're left with a slapback. For comparison, I'll bypass my pedal so you can hear my dry tone. As I activate it, you can hear how a low value on delay A gives the sensation of a small reflective space. If I add delay B back in, the repeat fills in the space a bit more. Can add some feedback to that. Setting the tap mode to tempo, on the other hand, makes it easy to access common subdivisions like eighth notes, dotted eighths, quarter notes, and triplet feels. As you turn the knob, you can hear the delay time change as you cross into a new subdivision along the range of the knob. We can use these ranges to get delays to play off of one another. Tempo mode also works well if you're syncing micro pitch delay to an external MIDI clock. Apart from showing which mode you're in, the tap LED button also serves to save presets. 
To save your current settings, press and hold the Tap LED button. The Preset Ladder, Active button, and Tap button LEDs will blink. Press and release the Tap LED button to select a location for your preset from 1 to 5. Press and release the Active LED button to save the preset. The LEDs will stop blinking. The current preset LED will stay lit. Note, save mode times out after a few seconds. Pressing either foot switch also exits save mode. One last note on foot switches and buttons. The pedal will remember the last state of the LED buttons when the pedal is turned off. So it will remember if the active button was in latching or momentary mode, whether the tap LED button was in preset scroll mode or tap mode, and whether or not the page button was engaged. So always pay attention to whether or not it's lit to determine which parameters the knobs are controlling. Though the pedal can only access 5 presets, it can keep up to 127 in its memory. By connecting the pedal via USB to a computer, you can use the Eventide Device Manager application to view, edit, and select presets from a list. Move them into or out of your top 5 slots so that later you can access them on the pedal. EDM also allows you to create and restore backups of your entire list and to import and export individual presets to your computer. Please note that if you choose a preset on EDM that is outside of the top 5, the last two LEDs on the pedal's preset ladder will be lit. It's also important to note that anytime you make an adjustment on the front panel, after a preset has been loaded, the preset ladder will blink once indicating the preset has been modified. At this point, you should save your changes or risk losing them when you move to another preset.